Hello, and welcome to Trinity Church. We're glad that you decided to join us here this morning at our live service at half 10, or whether you're joining later in the day or even this week. We're so glad that you are a part of Trinity Church here with us. We have an incredible service planned with um, our teaching back in the book of Romans, as well as worship and some things for the kids. So we pray that you are blessed this morning as we worship together. Thanks.
eternity, the moon and the stars declare who you are. I'm so unworthy, but still you love me forever, my heart will sing of how great you are holy, great and mighty, the moon and the stars. Amen. It's so wonderful to worship God together. Let's continue to worship him as we pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning for the glory of your presence, your presence that is with us wherever we are. Lord God, we over the years have gathered in a building together and we felt your presence in a real way with one another and even through one another. But now in these days as we are separated, we thank you that your presence is still with us because you're an omnipresent God. So this morning, whether we're at home, uh, wherever we are, whether we're on our own or with family members, I pray that you will be with us by the power of your spirit. We thank you for who you are. We thank you that you're God and we put our trust in you. We're fully dependent upon you. Lord, we need you. Come and meet us. And we thank you for Jesus, our Savior, our King, our friend. Lord Jesus, we pray for your touch this morning. Touch us and make us whole. Touch us and heal and restore us. Touch us and make us new. Cleanse us from the inside out. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit, the Spirit that lives in us, 
the paraclete, the one who comes beside us to comfort us and guide us, the one who leads us on in your life, the one who gives us gifts and and enables us and empowers us to live godly lives. Fill us with your spirit today. And as we hear more about the hope that your spirit brings us later, God, do something in each one of our lives. Make us alive in Christ. And bless this time that we gather together as your family, that we may know you, that we may love you, and that we may fellowship with you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the service so far. Here's a story for the kids. Jesus told a story about two men who wanted to build a house. You can read about it in Matthew chapter 7. Here's a man. He's looking for a place to build a house. He climbs to the top of a big grey rock. Ah, here's a good place. The man begins to build his house. It's hard work. He puffs and pants. He puffs and pants and grunts and groans all day until the work is done. Just in time, he says. It looks like rain. The rain pours down, the lightning flashes, the thunder booms, booms, the water washes round the house and splashes at the rock. The rock stays firm. The man was wise to choose the rock. Here's another man. He wants a house. I want it now. I want it quick. This place will do, he says. He builds his house down on the sand. This won't take long. <whistles> and he whistles as he works. His house is done. He goes inside and shuts the door. A raindrop drips onto his nose. Oh dear. The rain pours down, the lightning flashes, the thunder boom, boom, booms. The water rushes through the house and splashes at his knees. The sand is washed away. His house falls flat. The silly man was wrong to build on sand. Jesus says, I am like the wise man's rock. If you trust me, I will never let you down. Jesus was really speaking about our lives. He wants us to build our lives on him, for him to be our rock, our firm foundation, to trust him with everything, and he will strengthen us in the difficult times and in the good times, in the storms of life. Can you do that? Hi folks, there's a few things that I want to encourage you to uh, hear that's going on in the church over the next little while. In a minute, Hannah is going to speak about youth and Chris about Man Alive. But for all of us, of course, we're looking at the regulations and the government guidelines and wondering what's happening in relation to being in church. So the church board have uh, come up with a survey which has been sent out to all those who have an email. Uh, please complete it and send it back to our church secretary as soon as you can. If you don't have uh, an email address, then please contact the church in some way through phone or via our website and we'll get a form to you so that we can hear how you feel, how things are going and all your thoughts and opinions about returning to church uh, to the building. So please complete that and listen up now to what's happening in youth and man alive. Hey youth, I've got another update for you again this week. We are going to be back in person. It's going to be so much fun. If you're from the ages of P7 to S6, please come out, have a great time with me and my youth leaders. We've all met together and realised that this is the perfect time together. After reading all the government guidelines over youth work, this is the time to be together. So we're going to do next Sunday, which is the 27th, and then we're also going to do the 11th and then the 25th from 2 until 4pm upstairs 
we're gonna play games, we're gonna hang out, and we're also gonna have a ton of teaching. I'm so excited to see you all. I hope you're excited to be back together. It's been a long, long six months since we've been able to be in person. So if you have any questions you have for me, then please just email me at pastorhannah at trinitychurchperth.org. Thank you. Last week, I shared some exciting information that we have some new things coming for the men at Trinity Church. In just a few weeks time, we're gonna be rolling out a new ministry for Trinity Men's Group. We're excited for all the things that we're offering, but specifically, we're gonna be focusing on three things, blessing, community, and discipleship. Blessing, because it's something for everyone. Just like how God desires to bless all of his children, or how the people and the children of Israel would all receive the manna from God, we want to bless all of the men at Trinity. So it's our desire that every man at Trinity be plugged into the group. We're gonna be creating a new Facebook and WhatsApp group where we can upload new videos of worship, interviews, as well as testimonies to bless all of us here at Trinity. We'll also be having community where when time's permitting, we can actually gather together but also for the Saturday morning men's breakfast. It's a time that we can gather together and just bl bless one another. And then discipleship. Discipleship is key. It's where we as men can bond together as we pray for one another and stand with each other and as we walk through our faith together. So we're excited about all that's coming and it's here in just another week or two, so stay tuned to all that's coming. There's gonna be an email going out as well as a text message about informing you on how you can get plugged in. But with this blessing of pulling all the guys together for the Facebook and WhatsApp group, that's gonna be our first initiative of trying to get all the guys tied together. So look forward to getting plugged into the new Trinity men's group, thanks. Hello church, God loves to give good gifts to his children and he lavishes us with his love. This is an opportunity right now to show our love and express our thanksgiving to God through our tithes and offering and gifts of love to him today for the work of the kingdom here on earth. So if you're part of our Trinity Church family, all the ways you can do that will appear on the screen just now. If you're a part of another local church fellowship, then please do find a way to give your tithes and offering and gifts of love to your local church. But above all, we know we need to give our offering of our sacrifices of praise to God. So let's continue in worship and praise to him now.
going to pray now for the sermon. Lord, I just thank you so much for this time that we've been able to spend online in the service this morning. I pray as Pastor Jim comes up to preach, I thank you for um, the ministry that you've given him for all the years that he has been in service to you. And I pray for those that um, the rest of the years to come as well. Lord, as he speaks to us, I pray that um, you will open our minds and our hearts, that we will hear a fresh word from you. That um, in this time of confusion and stress, that we will remember to be still and remember that you are God. Amen. Good morning. Once more, it's my joy to bring God's word to you, into your home, and, and hopefully this morning, into your heart. Today we move on in our teaching series in Romans to chapter 15. I'm going to spend a couple of weeks going through this chapter, and today we'll deal with the first 13 verses. So Paul is starting to wrap up the letter, and he's moved from the most powerful, systematic explanation of Christian doctrine to the most relevant, practical outworking of our faith. And that's how it must be. You see, head knowledge without a heart-embracing discipleship will never benefit anyone. No, our faith, our belief must overflow into our everyday lives as the Spirit of Christ works in us and works through us. That's what it means to live holy lives. So for the flat, last few Sundays, we've been looking at Paul's teaching on how we can live holy, effective, godly lives as followers of Jesus, both to please God and to bless others. And it deals with how we live in the world around us as ambassadors of Christ, citizens of heaven, bringing God's love and God's power to earth. But he also teaches how we ought to live towards one another in the church in a way that brings unity, that encourages each other and builds one another up and in particular, supports each other in our weaknesses and our struggles, so that together we all become who God wants us to be in Christ, the very best kingdom version of ourselves. Today we develop this and think how we can be people who live with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hope in life is indispensable. We cannot live without hope. People can survive much pain and disappointment. They can come through great trials and difficulties if they just have hope. But take hope away and life becomes unbearable. As believers, we've not just been given any hope. We live in the ultimate hope through Jesus. We live with the hope of glory. The hope that the God who is with us today holds tomorrow in his hands. Hope in the solid facts of God's character, of Christ's salvation, of the Spirit's daily living presence within us. And this living hope never disappoints us. So hope is fundamental to our faith. And Paul says we ought to have hope in abundance. So let's get into the passage now and read chapter 15, verses 1 to 6. We who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us should please our neighbors for their good to build them up. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So Paul starts the chapter with a challenge and call to all in the church to build each other up. The two phrases he uses here, bear with the weak and please our neighbors, are leading to his conclusion about the grace life of the church. And both refer to bearing up, lifting up, building up our church family. But why is this reminder to build each other up so important? Well, I think there's three reasons. Firstly, it's a kingdom value that we must aspire to. 
and it's countercultural to the world values we often see lived out around us. You see, it's so easy to tear people down. Small, weak-minded people do that. But it takes real strength to lift someone up and to build them up to the next level. Today in the world, we constantly see in the media and on social media how some people are so quick to tear others down, to criticize, to discourage people, to look down on them or feel superior to them, particularly when we see their struggles and weaknesses, to show them no grace and to kick them when they're down. But we must live in a different way to that in the church. And the second reason that follows on from that, the reason we must live differently is because we must live like Jesus. We've got to live how he lived and follow his ultimate example. In Philippians chapter 2, Paul reflects on Jesus' attitude of humility and the self-denial which he chose to live by, how he became low that he might build us up. Listen to what he says. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. That is the kingdom. And that's how Jesus lived. That's how he wants us to live. Although he was God and he had all power and strength at his fingertips by right, he laid it all down. He humbled himself. He became a servant and even went to the cross for us. Paul says we must do the same. And the third reason that we've got to build people up is that it's how we encourage others to keep going. You see, faith is not a moment. Faith is the journey of a lifetime. And we can get discouraged. Sometimes we may even be tempted to give up altogether. And never forget we have an enemy who works tirelessly and relentlessly to steal, kill, and destroy our faith. So we must be just as relentless in our intention to build each other up, to cheer each other on, to speak words of encouragement, to stand together, to lift each other up when we fall. That is the strength of the body, and it's one of the greatest responsibilities and privileges of being part of the family of God. And then secondly, Paul reminds us in chapter 15 that as people of different backgrounds and different cultures, there was Jews, there were Gentiles, people though who now have been grafted together into one righteous family of faith, we must accept one another. So let's read verses 7 to 12. Paul says, accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews on behalf of God's truth, so that the promises made to the patriarchs might be confirmed, and moreover, that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing the praises of your name. Again, it says, rejoice, you Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Let all the peoples extol him. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations. In him, the Gentiles will hope. Amen. Once more, Paul starts by pointing to the example of Jesus, which we ought to follow. You see, we were graciously accepted by him. We were saved by his grace. And so we must graciously accept others. Jesus died that we might be free. But when we accept him by faith, God accepts us as daughters and sons. And people long for acceptance, because acceptance brings understanding, and understanding brings belonging, and everybody needs to belong. As we're born again, we belong to God as part of his family. If you're a Christian this morning, you belong to God. You've been accepted by him. 
You've been redeemed and restored by him. You are now a daughter or a son. And it should be remembered that this belonging, this acceptance, does not come by right. It doesn't come by performance. It doesn't come by works. It doesn't come by anything we do, but simply by grace, only grace. And ourselves, we're not good enough to be accepted by God. We never could be. It's only through Jesus and what he does in us through his blood and by the power of his spirit. And equally in the church, we don't just accept those who pass the test or meet the mark or have the right background or the right heritage or wear the right clothes. No, none of these things matter. It's only through grace and the mutuality of incorporation into Christ that we become one. We are loved. We are accepted by God and we should be accepted by each other. So don't be proud. Be humble. Be grateful. Be glad that you've been accepted and accept and love each other. No matter where they come from, no matter what they have done, we are all the same before God through Christ. And finally, as we live like this, not only does it fill us with hope, it causes us to be overflowing with hope. Let's close reading verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think that's one of the most encouraging verses in Scripture. On announcing my new role, Maggie and I received a card from a friend in church, and it's got that verse on the front of the card, and we keep it in the kitchen. And it's a daily reminder of what we have in Christ, but also what we've been called to do in Christ and who we have been called to be in Christ. And I think the word overflowing is the key because nothing can overflow unless it's filled to the brim, whether that be a bath or a sink or a pot or a glass. Once it's full and you keep pouring it in, then it starts to run over. As we are filled with the Spirit, let's not just accept half a tank full. Don't settle for being nearly full, being nearly sanctified. We want to be completely, entirely, fully sanctified and filled by the Spirit. Be filled and then ask for some more. You know, the filling of the Spirit is one of the few things in Scripture that we're allowed to be greedy about. Ask God to fill you and then fill you some more so that all that the Spirit flows and pours into you will then overflow to those around you. And here's what Paul reminds us that pours into our life and then pours out of our life to the world. Joy and peace and ultimately hope. Don't you think you'd like that to be in your life? Don't you think you'd like your life to be overflowing with those gifts? And don't you think the world around you needs them and needs them today more than we've ever done? Then let the Spirit of the Lord fill you. Let Him drench you. Let that overflow come and bubble up in your life and then splash out to all those around you. That's what it means to be overflowing with hope by the power of the Spirit. So as always, I'm going to pray to offer you the, the opportunity to give your life to Jesus. Because unless you give your life to Jesus, unless you accept Him as your Savior, God can't accept you as a child. He can't accept you as a son or daughter. You've got to cross over and be born again. And then 
you get filled by the Spirit. And then you start that journey of being filled again and again and again by the Spirit of God that you may overflow to the world around you. Paul reminds us salvation starts when we put our trust in Jesus. So I'm going to pray two prayers. And wherever you are this morning, you'll be in one of these categories. And I encourage you to pray after me. If you don't know Jesus and you want to put your trust in him, then pray. And if you are a Christian and you do know him, I want to pray this morning that you'll be so filled by the Spirit of the living God that your life would be like rivers of life and hope and joy and peace and grace to all those around you. So let's pray together and repeat after me. Father God, I thank you that you love me and I come to you now in faith and with repentance and ask you to forgive me and through Jesus to accept me as your son and your daughter. Fill me, renew me, cleanse me and make me whole. Today, I want to be so filled by your spirit that I overflow into the world around me, that all of Jesus in my life would splash on those around me, that they may have that touch of heaven here on earth. Be with me, use me, and help me to be an incredible blessing to everyone I meet in your name and for your glory. Amen. We're going to go back and hear another wonderful song of worship.
privilege on this Sabbath day to worship God and to receive from him through his word. Thank you for joining with us. And now may God our Father watch over us and God the Son walk with us and God the Holy Spirit work through us today and always. Amen. <laughs> 